All right, so we're going to continue to flesh out this class. Now, this, remember, is going to be a class of objects that moves around on the screen. Um, but it needs to be able to hear the input from the demo panel. And so the demo panel already has listeners set up. Um, it has a motion, mouse motion listener. It has a key listener. It has just a normal mouse listener. So you can use any of these methods with your uh, classes. I'm only going to implement... I think two, which is the key pressed and key release. So initially, um, oh, and then I'm going to implement no, that, that's it for uh, initially, what, that's all we're going to implement is um, key pressed and key released. So we want to be able to hear if the up, down, left, and right keys have been pressed. And so that's possible over here, and we're going to do some more stuff over here to make it transfer the data across. But for the time being, let's just make sure in our abstract class it's able to listen to those things. So we need a method called public void. It doesn't need to return anything, and we're going to call this key pressed. So it has a key been depressed, and we're just this will take an integer k. So the the intention is that like the panel class will send it the key code for whatever is pressed and we'll make choices based on that. So we're going to say if k, the key that was pressed, equals key event, and this is how you listen to key events, uh, dot vk up. What do we want to do? Well, we just want to set the value of up to true. Um, up equals true. Because remember in our set position method, we, we set the position based on the value of the booleans. So we say if up equals 2, then we do the proper thing. So we just need to keep track of the booleans and the key press stuff. So I'll just copy that. And now we'll say if uh, k, key pressed equals vk down, down equals true. And we'll do two more of these. Oops. Um, if k equals right. You guessed it, right equals true. Oops, and this has to be caps. And VK left, and left equals true. So we're going to do a very similar thing to this method for the key release. So that means like when a person stops moving in a certain direction, can you guess what we need to do if the key is released? We need to set these things to false so that we are no longer incrementing the X and Y position based on um, the, the keys that have been released. Okay, and um, let's set up another method for selecting these things. So like we're going to have multiple um, uh, objects on the board at any given time, so I want to make sure that we can select them. Boolean. Uh, so this is going to be a different method to check if the thing is selected. Uh, is selected, and we need to create a field too. But it's going to get passed over a value from the um, panel class, and this is going to use mouse click. So int mouse x and int mouse y, and we're going to say if mouse x. And so if they click on this object selected, if mouse x is greater than x and mouse x is less than x plus width, so if it's within the range of our objects in the, in the horizontal direction, we're going to say if it's in the range in the y direction, mouse y is greater than y and mouse y is less than y plus the height of our object. That means it's in range uh, in the uh, y direction, return true. We're just going to say, yeah, this, this object is selected. And if not, if none of those things are um, return, we should return false if it's not. So this method is going to be used in the demo class, now, or in the panel class. Now, I know this doesn't make sense yet, but the intention is that the panel class is going to listen for mouse clicks and when the mouse is clicked, it's going to go through a list of objects and check if that click is pertinent to this object and then set some value over there. So these two things are going to work together, which is why this isn't quite clear yet. You're going to see how it works in just a minute. 
But I said at the beginning, to be an abstract class, we need to have an abstract method. Well, we haven't done that yet, so we still need to draw this thing, but I'm not going to set a basic draw method. We're going to have protected abstract void draw, and this is going to take a graphics 2D object, and we're going to call, we're going to be consistent across our methods and call it G. Now this is... Um, uh, just an important thing to note, like when you declare an abstract method, you do not have to implement it because you are never going to create an instance of this object, and so uh, it would be like the whole point of an abstract method is that there is no implementation. It's just an abstract. It's just like an interface. So what is an abstract class? It's like um, it can have a list of abstract methods that is very much like an interface. Uh, it it can have implemented methods that then other things will be able to inherit from it. And it can have fields, it can have all sorts of stuff. So the advantage is that it can be a much more fleshed out thing, unlike an interface with just, just a list of methods. But the disadvantage is you can only inherit from a single um, single class. You can only have one parent class, which we're going to see in a minute, because next up we're going to begin creating children classes from this, and you'll see why we've done a lot of these things. And that'll be in the next video.